Hey everybody, this is C Doubles 2, and this is my let's play of Minecraft 1.12 for uh, with Direwolf 20's mod pack installed. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, thanks to a uh, one of my viewers, uh, Blind Vengeance Gaming, uh, gave me a really good link to a the ability to control uh, your reactor using open computers. Uh, I used to use Legacy uh, RedNet. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, because uh, it used to. Oh! Oh, it's Redstone Arsenal. I thought RedNet was back, but. Um, because you could do a lot with uh, RedNet. Uh, it was able to control Redstone signals and for different various uh, functions on the on the computer on the. Um, on the reactor and stuff, and as you can see, it's running. I'm generating 14.5. I'm a little worried about the temperature. I don't know why it's running so hot. Uh, this is getting filled slowly. I mean, I've got you know 1.2 gigawatts of energy, but uh, anyway, uh, since I do want to, oh, come on, reactor. Uh, since I do want to control it because I don't want it burning full blast all the time, especially after it gets filled. Uh, I'm going to go through open computers now. I've already gotten the manual out, and I read through it for a change. Uh, unfortunately, there's no wireless network card, which would be really great, but there is a there is a network card. Um, and uh, if you want to check out uh, the link that Blind Vengeance Gaming gave me, uh, I will include it in the description below. Uh, it's a video from 2016, but it still appears to be a, a valid Open Computers uh, program because um, <clears throat> I've seen other people use it uh, who have been doing tutorials earlier this year. So uh, anyway, I'm going to show you the basics of what it is to get through it. Um, as you can see here uh, in Open Computers, there's a lot of components here, tier ones. Multiple tiers of of stuff, tier one, two, and three. Uh, what we're going to do, and I think I've already done a lot of the programming for it, is let's see, do I have? I did not do that. Um, I need a computer case. You know what? I'm going to go program that in because I know I have all the other parts for it. So let's just pop that into a pattern. And put it down here. Yeah, you see there's all my patterns and stuff for the computer. Makes it a lot easier. Okay. So I can explain as I go. Okay, first generate the case. Now the case is made up of a lot of things. Your base unit is transistors, circuit boards are included in there, microchips, and all the things that you would associate with a computer are put together in there. Um, a lot of them use the... the um, you know, use the raw materials, iron and, and, and clay and stuff like that. So let's just start with that. Get a tier three, three one going. And I'll show you what that, there we go. Oh, be quiet. Let me sleep through the night to get rid of him. And I like the, st I like the texturing on it from Sfax. That's definitely Sfax. If you look at it here, okay. Uh, it doesn't tell you what these are, but you can tell by their guess. Here's a floppy drive. Really? Oh. You're not going to die. Go. Go away. Go away. Thank you. Um, but here is your CPU. Here's a couple of hard drives, a floppy drive, memory cards. Uh, and extra uh, accessories plus a, uh, a little EEPROM to load your computer up. And as it says, you know, no energy. Oh well, yeah, it's not being powered. But we're going to need a lot more parts to it. So let's do this. Let's get a CPU for it. You know, of course it's going to be a tier 3 CPU. Uh, we will need memory. Like any good computer, you need memory. I'll get two modules just so that it has plenty of memory to run. We'll need a hard drive to store programs on. Uh, we will also need a keyboard. Uh, we will also need a graphics card because we are going to hook this up to a screen. 
And as you can see, the graphics card builds on a bunch of other stuff. The circuit boards, the transistors are all there. Start with that, and then we need um, screens. I'm not going to make it there. The, the guy programmed it for a 5 by 3 screen. I'm not going to make it that big. I'm just going to make it, uh, you know, a 2 by, what was it? Uh, 2 by 4, yeah. So that's 8 screens. All right. I realized it did really need a lot of obsidian when I looked at it. I was like, wow, that's a lot of obsidian. So I went and actually added a, uh, a uh, igneous extruder to my setup downstairs because uh, <laughs> I was running out. Reminds me, lava. How's lava? Oh, good. Lava's back to 255. Uh, okay, so let me see what we've got now at Open Computers. Okay, we've got uh, a graphics card, a CPU, a hard drive, uh, a keyboard. I only have one memory module. Why do I only have one memory module? I've got eight screens. Am I still... Did I miss something? One tier three memory. Uh, okay, let's get another one. Need another one. Uh, there it goes, flipping through all the other stuff. Duh, 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 and bingo. Okay, so I'll show you how it installs in here before we put the power on. Okay. CPU goes in here, and it, and it highlights where it's supposed to go, so you know. This is a memory slot. Auto inserts. Graphic card goes up there. Since it's tier three, this tells you the highest that it can hold. So in other words, your second hard drive can't be as good as the tier three. Same with the memory modules. Your memory modules can hold up to three. That can hold up to three. This can only hold one. This is a floppy drive. We'll get to that in a second. Keyboard doesn't go in here. It's going to go get attached to your screens. Um, now you need uh, to start the program to start to start any computer up, whether you know it or not. You need an EEPROM. Uh, that's basically the operating structure. It's like DOS. Um, actually, it's below DOS because DOS is an operating system. It's it's the level below DOS that DOS operates on. So we click there. We get an EEPROM. EEPROM goes in here, in this spot, and we still don't have enough power. Um, you know what? Let's do this. Let's. Since I've got everything programmed. Let's do this. Yep, you break it, everything comes back to you. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, let's put it right on my, well, you know what, let's get some cables so I can show you the cables. Get some computer craft cables. Uh, let's get 10, that should be good enough to start with. All right, uh, so we can hook them up. Uh, sure, we can hook it up. All right, let's put the computer over here automatically connects itself. Um, oh, I'm going to need power. So, I was thinking ahead and did this. Talking on that side. There we go. Okay. Oh, I guess it's faced. So, it can't, if it can't see the face, it can't see it. Okay, so we now have power. And click it on. Oh, no CPU installed. This is very good. The, I have to say, he did a better job than Windows on this mod for telling you what's wrong. So let's install CPU. Try to turn on. No RAM. So we add some RAM. Now I could add just one module. Oh, it's looking for two. Guess you need two modules. Wait, what? Oh, now it's just beeping at me. So if I take one out... Okay, so you only need one module of memory in there. Uh, now, if there is still an error and you can't see anything, you gotta go... He provided an analyzer. Uh, spell it right. Uh, so I should have the parts for that. No, I don't. I need a circuit board. Give me one of those, and we should be good to go. Yep. Okay, and this will tell me what the problem is. See how it's flashing red? Let you know there's a problem. Click it with the analyzer. Right click, shift right click. And in the screen here, uh, it shows no BIOS found. It's all a configured EEPROM. That's what I needed the EEPROM for. Now, also, I just noticed if you click, if you hold on this, you can see what's already in there. But that's uh, the one probe. So let's click on here, add in our EEPROM there. 
Okay, something's still wrong. No BIOS found in... Oh, because this is an EEPROM without any instructions. You'll notice if you look in here under EEPROM, there is a blank one and then there's the Luya BIOS. And that's what you need to get. An open computer manual. So I just need to go to computer manual. Another computer manual. And then add these two together. And that adds the BIOS, which is what the computer uses to run. Oh, something else is wrong. No bootable medium found. Okay. Oh, you know what? I didn't include my hard drive. Turning on. Oh, still something wrong. Yep, no bootable media found. Initialize.lua. Because that's a clean hard drive, there's absolutely nothing on there. You need to add your floppy disk, and I did not create one, did I? Ah, uh, okay, floppy. Here's the floppy disk for open computers. And like the other one, it is used to create... Whoops, not floppy U. It is used to create open OS. Huh. I did not see these. Ink sac. That's a floppy disk. Mode managed. Huh. I don't know what the managed... I don't know. I, I, I'm guessing it's just to change the... Huh. Oh, not sure what that is, but... Okay. Oh, wait, no, don't grab my open book. Give me, an op give me another open book. Okay, now you can use that one. Go ahead and use that one. Okay, and you f put the floppy disk in. You hear that little click there? That's the old time, oh, let's push it into the slot and let it engage. Um, now it should work. Oh, wait, I might as well install my graphic card while I'm here. Okay, it's working, it's working. Is it going to beep? No, it's not. But you can't see anything. Number of connected components. Three of 16. So, uh, there you go. That's the problem, isn't it? You've got this fancy computer, but you've got nothing to see it with. Well, that's what the... That's what I'm going to build the... Uh, mo whoops, monitors for. Let's not do that. Oh, come on, guys. Really? There you go. Uh, let's cover up that trash can. Uh, where's my... Screens? Oh. That's right, they're right in front of me. I'm used to the flat black ones from... There you go, see how... Whoops, no, I didn't want it that high. Mm -hmm. Two by four. Uh, now, supposedly, if you click on this... No. Um, shift right click... No, oh, big thing. Always throw a computer keyboard on there. It can be anywhere on here. Doesn't matter where. Now it's clickable. There we go. Now we can read it. Okay. Use many component methods have a short document. Use the interpreter to see it. Okay. Alrighty. Now, here's where things get tricky, and you'll probably want to slow this down or go back to the original video like I do uh, when you try and see it. Um, and you will, you know, get a sense for what it is. So hold on a minute and I'll give you some instructions because you're going to have to go to paste bin in order to uh, in order to get that. Hold on a moment. Alrighty, I'm back. Um, yeah, I've also forgot one other important part. One of the peripheries you need, the internet card. Now I want to show you the recipe because I kind of find it amusing. But here you go, the interweb. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, I like this pro uh, This guy's the, the mod author is really on the ball on that one. Okay, we'll need that for later. But for right now, we've got our operating system, we've got a blank hard drive, let's go get that installed. So what you want to do is just simply click, uh, in, just type in install, because since it found no other operating system, it just went to the floppy drive. You'll hear it beeping, and it'll ask you to install the open OS. You say yes, and it'll go. Uh, now, it's going to take this about a minute or so to install, so I'll be back as soon as that's done. 
Alrighty, so we're back and hang on a moment. Let me check. Okay, uh, we're back and it is done booting and copied a whole bunch of files to the hard drive, blah, blah, blah. Not your hard drive, the drive in the computer. Uh, you want to reboot now because you wanted to boot off that hard drive. And there we go. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Okay. Uh, now, if you want to get out of the screen without saving anything, just hit escape. It brings you back to your prompt. Uh, Control W also does that. Um, and now you can take out your operating system. You don't need it anymore. Uh, but I usually will keep it around just in case something happens and I have to create another computer somewhere. Who knows? Uh, now, the next part is the part that's tricky, and you may or may not enjoy this. Uh, it is the um, going to Pastebin and getting the uh, actual operating system uh, for your computer, or well, the program, I should say. Uh, it is a pastebin file. Uh, the mod author, or the author of it, uh, has given permission for folks to use it and download it. Um, he has an API for one of his for part of the program. Uh, but since it's on pastebin, you can also take a look at the raw data and stuff if you're worried about it. Uh, but what we want to do is go to pastebin. Oh. It should be paste, spell it right, bin get the file, and the file code is s lowercase j, uppercase j, i, zero, lowercase b, u, m. And I did it wrong. Oh, because I forgot to name the file. Um, okay. Uh, let's give it a name. Let's give it a uh, start. Dot. Lua. I think that's what it should be called. Start top Lua, yeah. Okay, there you go. So the program is now there, and you can actually see it if you list using the ls command. It's right there. Now, in, this is back in the old days. If you hit double dots, it means go back to the previous directory. I'm sure if you've ever used a you know, Windows Explorer or the Mac system, you always know the up, you know, the the the, the little arrow button that takes you back. Uh, to the previous uh, to the previous uh, or the higher level directory because you save stuff in files and stuff like that, um, and you can list what's in here, and you can see all that is there. Now you want to create, um, an, uh, you want to create auto run, which is done by clicking edit, typing edit, the name of the file auto run .lua, and whoops, there you go. That's what you need to. That's what you need to put in. Um, then, after you do that, uh, after you've gotten the file downloaded and all that, you edit the file and then you create a file here in the, in the file, the auto run file, os dot execute. Um, Oops, hang on a second. What is going on with my keyboard? What is going on with my keyboard? Okay, there we go. Type in os.execute uh, parentheses, uh, double quotation marks, home forward slash start.lua, which is the name of the... That's telling it what file in that directory to drive. Double quote ending and then end parentheses. Alrighty, and you do that. Um, and that's basically telling the program that you're going to start, you want to run that start Lua program. So, after that, you come back to, uh, you hit, oh I'm sorry, yes, control S to save, and it shows you down here in the bottom, auto run saved. And then Control W brings you out of the editor mode, and then you can type uh, auto run, and there you go. It started up the program. Now this is in full screen mode, so you don't need that. You can hit uh, escape, and there it is up on your up on your uh, 
computer. Now, if you want to, you hit uh, Control W. Oh wait, no. Uh, I forget how to get out of this. Control C. Control C breaks you out of it. Uh, you can go to CD Home to get to the directory, and you can actually edit start dot Lua. Oops, dang it! Don't save it. And you can list your directory, and you can go edit start dot Lua, and it shows you what you're executing. You're executing the API from his base bin. Executing the reactor, and that's basically what what you're starting there. Uh, so all you need to do is go uh, Control W to get out of it. You can type start in the home directory if you want. It's download it downloads and gets that every time, every time you run the program. So you're. J in this interface, you're now at the screen. You have all your RF controls. You know what? I might actually increase it to 3 by 5 just for uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I need 7 more screens. Uh, screen. 7, start. OK, and it's running full tilt. Uh, oh, it's actually starting to store energy now. Yes, it is. All right, so minimum we want. Okay, so yeah, you have to right-click on there to bring it up, and we want a minimum of 60, maximum of 80. So it's starting to calm down now, and yep, it inserts all the rods. This shows you your rod levels, shows you how much energy is stored, which should be about 80%. Um, yeah, because it's... Uh, what is this at? See how they inserted the rod levels? And you can probably see here, yeah, see they're very minorly tweaking it. We're now putting out about 2K, which is what we're using up there. So that means this is finally full. Yippers, there you go, 1.6 gigawatts. There we go. Uh, and you can see energy elastic. It's showing you what you could put out. Now you can change that. Uh, let's see if we have uh, screens available. Yes, they are. Pop up my screens. What's going on here? Is there a block there? No. Um, okay. All right, let's turn this off for a minute. Whoa, what's... Oh, the keyboard's there. Didn't think about that. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Hey, no. Really? You have to... You're actually orienting... Okay, well, whatever. All right, let's put the keyboard on the side then. Why did I get so many extras? Oh, because that's 4x3. Oh, that's why. Didn't put it on the end. Okay, now if I turn this back on... Now you see how this escapes running at the current level that it was at? And there we go. And now if I wanted to do this... Uh, let's lower the max down to 80. Minimum... We want to maintain a minimum of 20%. So... This will keep me ticking over so that I am... Uh, Right-clicking on the on the buttons, include... Include it. Um, yeah, I want to keep my... Well, I don't need to keep my energy buffer full. Keep it at max. Now, I could turn the reactor off if I hit the off button up here. Ah, uh, that's supposed to... yeah, see how it's, it's disabled the reactor, it's starting to cool down. Hit the on button. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't indicate whether you've got it on or not. So, um, yeah, this is interesting. This is something I'm going to play with uh, to see how it works. Uh, so I can 
check my energy consumption here. Because I'm not keeping the reactor very... Because uh, the casing heat is not high. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm barely, barely ticking along there. But it is very inefficient, because you can tell your efficiency here. This should be... Yeah, for fuel 100, it's totally turned off. These rods are almost all the way in. Yeah, they're 100% in. Oh, okay, so I guess I guess it's filled up with energy. Yeah, 90% max. Okay. And I'm not using any energy? That's unusual. I'm not using any energy. Did something break? Hmm. Uh, no, there is some energy leaking out. Oh, okay, I see what's happening. It's a small drain. So it shut the reactor off so that it's not going to use that fuel. Yeah, so it's going to wait. And then it will power itself up and... Okay. So I'm going to set this really low. Because the longer you... Oh, that's right. The longer you do that... The longer it runs, the more efficient it is. It's kind of interesting, but... Anyway, uh, that was the tutorial. Well, not tutorial. It was just a demonstration of me setting up open computers for my reactor, because I hate leaving the reactor running unless I've got something to flood it into, and, and that just isn't big enough to really flood it in. And it still took a while. It took well, maybe about two, three hours of actual game time uh, to fill that up, so I could just imagine how much of a bigger... Uh, one is so uh, let's go over and check our canola I think everything's going well here oh I've got to take a uh, gotta yep we're good there we're all good there how's our battery doing here because I did transition some stuff off of it um, let me see well and yeah I still don't know what's going on with this ender stuff because yeah so I've got the thermal expansion stuff all set up on there, but I can't do anything with Ender I.O. It all just disconnects, so... Hmm. It's a conundrum. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... How many, oh, this is almost maxed out. 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, yes, because I can only hold, I think, 16 per? I think that's only 16 per? Oh, 15 of 32. Oh, okay. Um, then I want to do this. Let's do that, and we'll do that. Alrighty, and then I can disconnect this. Oh, come on. Disconnect that one, and this one I can just disconnect altogether. And do I really still need that? know if I still need that because I'm not using I haven't used my farm now that I can farm ender pearls I really don't need this so you know what let's do a little a little base cleanup okay get rid of the grass here yeah I know flowers okay, okay. come on come on go 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 And then I'm just going to break this. Wow, that was a that was a real break there. That just went right through everything. That's so freaking efficient. Wow. Okay. Oops. You know I never did get in the Binnie's mods. Maybe I'll try that too. Uh, yeah. Now is the time. Now that I've got that much energy floating around, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. There we go. Um, I'll just leave the cables like that. I'm not going to worry about it. I can cut some back, but not far. All right, let's do the mag. Oh, that's why I don't have my magnet on because I took it off. There we go. There we go. Okay, we got it. Um, now let's go close this up. The floor back in. Alright, 
and do a little dress up. All right, and so I can break this because I don't really want to get rid of that, but um, can get rid of that. This I can stick into. I can stick this in a wall, couldn't I? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the input there. Uh, can I find an output? You know, uh, let's just throw it in there. There we go. Alrighty. Wait, what? Oh, that's an interesting new texture. Oh, I like that! Arrayed bricks. I really have to go look at back at this. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll go back and spend an episode. Okay, this. Um, we got to find a better place to put this. What are you feeding into? What is that? That's the. Oh, that's the controller. Hmm. But I need that to be powered. Hmm. All right. Um, you know what? I can bring it in through here, can't I? Yes, I can. All right. Um, anyway, this episode is running really long. Sorry. I will do some cable moving and stuff off camera. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is C Doubles Two. Please give a like to the video if you like it, or subscribe. And thanks for watching.